What's up, everybody? My name is Alex Wilson. I have my co-host beside me, Anthony Rivardo from Fireside Giants, an Empire Sports Media production, and you're listening to the Fireside Giants podcast. If you're a diehard Giants fan, you've come to the right place, my friends. Daily episodes, interviews, draft content, and so much more. Make sure to drop a like in the description below on YouTube. Don't forget to leave a comment. We love to engage with everybody. Now, today's episode, another film review. As you know, we've been cranking these things out, trying to get you guys some good content for the draft, the combine coming up next week. So much more to break down. One player that really stood out during the senior bowl, and I know the senior bowl kind of it's like the same thing as hog mollies. It kind of like it, it brings us back to bad memories when Dave Gettleman would go to the senior bowl and say, Oh, I fell in love with this player, whether it be Daniel Jones or anybody else. Um, and we've seen him strike out in the senior bowl before, but that doesn't mean that it's not a valuable, uh, you know, thing and it's not a valuable place for coaches and, and management to get a good idea of what players are coming out. And one guy that really stands out is Florida State University pass rusher, Jermaine Johnson. A lot of people have been, you know, throwing his name my way. And I figured, hell, let's do a freaking interview or rather um, let's do a film breakdown. I will, I will try to get an interview. He's a big name. So that would be insane. But film analysis nonetheless, and we'll try to get some good information here for you guys. so You can get a better idea of what he would offer this team. He has been skyrocketing up draft boards lately. Um, he, he was like an early, uh, like an early second round pick. Now that we have Daniel Jeremiah from NFL network, putting him in the top 10 draft network has him as a, is a top 10 player in this draft. A lot of people are looking at him and saying, Hey, this guy's legit. And he's coming off one of the best seasons of any pass rusher in this draft class. Now keep in mind, this pass rush draft class is one of the best we've seen in quite some time. It's extremely deep. There's a lot of players to like Kayvon Thibodeau being one of them. Jeremiah also said he's going to be dropping for whatever reason. So any more information we get on that, we will provide you as always. But before we dive into Jer Jermaine Johnson from FSU, Anthony, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to dive into Jermaine Johnson. I think this is a prospect that, as you mentioned, has been shooting up draft boards. I was taking a look at some old PFF articles and they were saying that he's projected to be like a third round pick. So at one point, just a couple months ago really he was projected to be a third round pick now they're talking about him potentially being a top 10 pick Alex is saying that he would be happy with him at seven overall I'm seeing more recent mock drafts with him in the 20s so he could potentially be a phenomenal trade down candidate as well we know last year when the Giants went ahead and traded down at the end of, or at the beginning of the first round got over to 20 a couple names that were up there for them, Quiddy Pay, Zizo Jolari, like there were guys that we thought that they would definitely take at that edge rusher position if they did trade down. This year, if they do happen to trade down with one of those two first round picks, you can probably bet that they're going to be looking at either offensive line or edge rusher with one of those trade down picks. Like that's almost a guarantee. Even if they don't trade down five and seven, probably there's a good chance you can make some bets five and seven are going to be a combination of an offensive lineman and an edge rusher. So if Jermaine Johnson really is shooting up the draft boards, I know everybody wants Kayvon Thibodeau to fall to five or even all the way down to seven. So the giants can get him. That's like the pipe dream that everybody wants. I know he's got some lowering stock recently with some interviews that he's done, but Jermaine Johnson is the one that's going up. So you got Kayvon Thibodeau going down. You got Jermaine Johnson going up. And I like Jam Jermaine Johnson's game. He's got some really, really good, solid movement for a guy his size. He's huge. He's really powerful. And he's able to make an impact not only as a pass rusher, but also as a really solid run defender. So this is a guy that, you know, the Giants could absolutely add to their roster if they draft him in this first round. And he could be a foundational building block that doesn't just contribute in one way, but contributes in multiple ways in a defense where you take a look at what Wink Martindale does. You need good run defenders. He's, he prided himself on having a really good run defense over in Baltimore, but you also need some pretty good pass rushers. He had a very blitz heavy uh, defensive scheme. So a guy like Jermaine Johnson might be a really good fit in the scheme where he can do all of the run cap run block or defending capabilities that Wink Martindale might ask of him, but he can also get after the quarterback in this blitz heavy scheme. Absolutely. And and yesterday I wrote an article saying that he would be a perfect option in a trade back scenario. Um, and then I watched the film. I, I got way more in depth with what he's capable of doing and looking at how powerful he is. He has a variety of pass rush moves. You know, we look back last year to Zizo Jalari, right? People were saying he could be a top 10 pick for us. That was a legitimate conversation that, people, that we were having a couple of weeks before the draft. And he ended up going 51 or 51st overall for a variety of reasons, the knee obviously was presented as a potential problem, which did not affect him at all last year. And the, the biggest con for him last year was that he was not really great at setting the edge just yet. He was not great in run defense. He was a good, fast, agile pass rusher, but he still needed to grow a little bit into his own frame and get some uh, football IQ at the, at the next level. And I think he did just that last season pairing a guy like, 
um, Jermaine Johnson with him would be tremendous. Why? Because Jermaine Johnson is an NFL ready run stopper. He's a big ass dude. He's capable of being um, a solid pass rusher in addition. And I think that makes him super valuable. You know, having a guy that's coming out of FSU, he transferred from Georgia, right? He wanted to be the star on the defense. He didn't want to be behind Trayvon Walker, Nicobe Dean. He didn't want to be behind these guys. He wanted to be the star um, guy and he played linebacker with Georgia and he they actually uh, Florida State said you're a pass rusher man you need to be going and being uh, uh, in rushing the passer he's six foot five 260 pounds dude is just muscle straight up muscle he tied 11.5 sacks last year 17.5 tackles for a loss 70 tackles in 12 games not to mention two forced fumbles and one of the nicest plays from a defensive end I've ever seen in coverage dude stretches full out and gets an awesome interception he tips it and his teammate intercepts it when you see a guy like that it really makes you think you know he's not just a defensive end he transitioned from linebacker to defensive end He's capable of driving back into coverage. He fits the outside linebacker system perfectly for what Wake Martindale is trying to do. J Jermaine Johnson, while I would be happy with him, as I said, I tweeted out, I'd be happy with him as a seventh overall pick because of what he's capable of doing day one and the upside. And keep in mind, the Giants just went out um, and got the guy, that, that coach from the Vikings. I'm, his name's skipping me right now. But he helped develop Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter, two guys who physical athletic freaks, um, and, and at the next level, a little bit raw, and he helped develop them into tremendous players. Um, and looking at Jermaine Johnson, raw athleticism is not a problem for him. He showed production at the collegiate level with Florida State, by the way, which is uh, plays very competitive teams. So he's doing it against big teams. It's not like you're, we're talking about George Karlaftis out of Purdue or like smaller teams here. We're talking about FSU, and he's, they're taking on, you know, very, very competitive squads, and I think that really aids in the discussion we're trying to have it that Jermaine Johnson is a legitimate player who can make an impact as a run defender and a pass uh, attacker um, at the next level day one, Anthony. Before we dive into the film, any last thoughts on Jermaine? Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to dive into the film, but I pretty much agree with all of the points that you've made. Not saying that this is a guy that I absolutely want in the first round, but this is a guy that, you know, I'm thinking about, and I, I, I have my eye on him. He's really got some traits. Um, we'll make some pro comparisons as we get going with the film, but he's a pretty solid player that I think Giants fans are going to take a liking to. All right, so let's start off this film. He's coming off the left side here. You can see he's kind of set up way outside, but he's trying to isolate this right tackle and put him in a spot where he's not going to have any help. And right off the bat, you see, he just completely, it's a nice in, in PFF use the word, use the phrase. He Euro steps people. He has a very interesting Euro. So Anthony and I do not like that phrase for the record. It's kind of a basketball term, but you can see what they're trying to say right here. Cause you can see right here. He, he redirects this tackle. He sees he's coming wide. So he has to get out of his stance quickly. He has to set that edge. He has to get out there and really make a stop in, in isolation. And he doesn't look at this, that jab step to the right. And he just uses his hands and, and gets around him so fast. For a 260 pound defensive end at six foot five, that speed is something to be you know concerned about if you're an opposing offensive lineman. I mean, he gets around him so fast, and he's immediately. I mean, this throw by the quarterback is tremendous for the record, but um, it's it's really impressive to see how quick he is with his feet, how quickly he reacts. Right, you see the right tackle. He gets out of his stance quickly. He's already he's preparing for impact. He's ready for him to take. Um, that, that momentum, that kinetic energy, but instead he uses that as leverage and he actually does a nice little jab step, widens, widens his bend around the edge and still manages to get after the quarterback at a tremendous speed. I mean, the guy just gets into his drop back. The quarterback just finishes his drop back after the play action. And he already has this man in his grill. Um, the fact he completed this pass is absolutely ridiculous, but, uh, just looking at Jermaine Johnson's speed, quickness, and his footwork, it's really, really nice to see, uh, right off the bat here. Yeah, that pass was a real prayer. I have no idea how that was completed. But you take a look at this, and I, I will say, you know, to some extent, because it's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? I, I don't want to be just completely positive on every prospect. We'll take a look at this play, and we'll say, you know what, maybe the quarterback just dropped back to way too far. And he also didn't do it on a straight line. If you watch what the quarterback does here, you see he's lined up, he's standing on the hash, and then he goes to do this play action. He's no longer standing on the hash. So to the credit of the offensive lineman, because if you watch his kick slide, he got out of his stance really quickly. Look at how fast he was out of his stance. He did this well. He played the beginning of the snap well. The quarterback didn't do him any favors by drifting over into his side. But what I like about what Jermaine Johnson was able to do here is that move, right? So it's not just the feet, because you mentioned that Euro step that PFF was talking about. You see how quickly his feet go from one way to the other. 
It's the hand swipe. That's what I like to see because that's something that, you know, coll collegiate edge rushers usually struggle with is using good hand fighting skills. And it's not only at the beginning. You can see that he's fighting along that line. He's keeping that arm extended on the right tackle, making the right tackle ride his hip. If we're continuing with the basketball motif in basketball, when you're playing defense, you always have to stay in front. You never ride the hip. It's the same thing for an offensive lineman. So once he gets this step here, because he uses that good hand fighting to swim move, he kind of chops that hand away. The defenders or the offensive tackle's hands goes down. Now he has to ride his hip the whole way. And once you do that, you lose all leverage. And the defender's going to get to the quarterback in that situation. So that's basically what happened here. It's a really nice pass rush move. And so we're going to look through a lot of clips on this film. And a lot of them are really great run defending clips. And from what I'm reading and everything that I've seen on the film, the, the consensus is he is a phenomenal run defender, but he is no shoe in as a pass rusher. He's also got the capability to get after the quarterback. And a lot of it has to do with his strength combination along with his hands. He has good hands and he's also got a lot of power in his upper body. Absolutely. And one thing I do want to point out before we move on to the next clip here is look how in sync his feet. I mean, look at this. This tackle is already out of a stance and the entire offensive line is still sitting there. He is really timed up. He knows I got to get out of my stance very quickly. Look how wide uh, Jermaine Johnson is lined up here. I got to make sure that I get him in isolation and he wins this rep. You know, the offensive line in terms of getting out into a stance, he wins the rep first. Um, he reacts. He's the first guy to react. But what I like about Jermaine Johnson is how in sync his feet and hands are. The moment, watch that jab step, and the second he goes around, his feet and his hands are perfectly in sync to react and and take advantage of that leverage he's just gained from you know creating a little bit of space between him and the right tackle there. And he does a great job of using that bend around the edge after after swinging his hands down and, and you know uh, you know taking that that contact away. And this you can't stop. I mean that like you said that quarterback's drop back was horrendous. I mean he puts himself in a really bad spot here. Um, but I mean, the second he gets, he finishes the drop back, even if he was a yard away, even if he was a yard to his right, Jermaine Johnson's still getting to him. Like he's in his grill the second it, he, he finishes the drop back. So that's a really nice play there from him. Um, and a great way to start off this video. Absolutely. I would say now let's take a look at the, by the way. Okay. This you're, Anthony, you're going to like this. You know who the left tackle is in this clip? Let you me know. Quote who is it? Okay, that's what we love to see. That's first round talent this. on first round talent. Yep. Watch the spin move that this man puts on Ike Mekwonu. Ike Mekwonu is from a family of athletes, superior athletes, and watch the spin move that he puts on him. I mean, the dude just saw a ghost. The dude is Sam Darnold's brother right now. He's seeing ghosts all over this field. This dude just teleported past him. I mean, that is unbelievable speed for, for a spin move. And, and he forces that, that quarterback to step up into the pocket. And that's all you really need for your interior lineman to get in there and, and create a sack opportunity. Um, and be that spin move against Ike Mikonu, who the, a lot of people are saying could go to the giants um, with the fifth overall pick. That's what you want to see best against best. And Jermaine Johnson kicked his ass on that rep. Yeah. And you know, you know, what's bizarre about this play is we, we talk about his power and his, you know, his strength, right? Because he's typically, you know, using his hands and he's using his power to get to the quarterback. And he's also setting the edge as a phenomenal run defender, right? So we're talking about a power rusher who can also pull a little finesse out of his bag like this. That's really impressive. That's the versatility that you really like to see because that means he's not a limited athlete. He's not a limited edge rusher who can only play the game in one type of way. He's only power or he's only finesse. No, he's got the capability to do both. He has tremendous quickness for a man his size. This guy is six foot five. He's a big dude. He is a powerful guy who used to play linebacker and he's a phenomenal edge setting edge rusher but he can also do this like that's kind of crazy and that these are the plays where you know you take a look at everything that he does in the run defense that we're going to get into in a second you take a look at his strength his power his length all of that stuff that's great that's first round talent but when you see a play like this on top of all of that that's when you 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 really do see where Daniel Jeremiah is coming from pushing him towards a top 10 projection because he has the ability to do all those great run defending and powerful things but he also has the ability to make some really quick speed rushes like this one against top tier offensive line talent. And that's what's eye opening. Absolutely. And I like how he finishes this rep uh, by putting his hand on, on Ikonu's back and just pushing him, making sure he gains that extra leverage. Um, and I, I'll even say this rep by Ikonu isn't bad, right? Jermaine Johnson is just better. Like this is a good rep by Ikonu. He's not leaning over. He protects the inside. He's got help inside. This move by Jermaine Johnson is just legitimately elite. That, that is what this is. This is not a bad rep. 
I mean, he's leaning forward here because he just spun and teleported around him. But it's not a bad rep by a quote by any means. Jermaine Johnson just showed why he is arguably one of the best pass rushers in this draft class and why he's deserving of the first round grade he's now getting from a lot of these guys. Now, let's take a look at some of this run defense here. He's here's against UNC. I mean, watch what he does here, right? There's two blockers coming in. This running back wants to follow those blockers and get and just sneak up right through that B gapper. Can't really tell, but he's trying to get through the gap right at the middle here. He forces him to bounce it outside, but. The thing about Jermaine Johnson is that he's also capable of shedding those blocks and then get, and then getting to the outside and sealing the edge at an even more just acute angle. And it's all about angles in the run game, right? So you're looking at him here. There's two blockers. The running back says, I'm trying to go up the middle. Crap. Um, all the way on the left side, Jermaine Johnson's already plugged up that gap. He's already forced two of my blockers inside. There's nowhere to go. Let me bounce this outside. Jermaine Johnson peeking over the shoulder right there. You can see he's looking where he's going. He bounces it outside and he sheds that block number 63 and he's off and he makes a tackle really nice play and run defense. That is translatable to the next level immediately. That's something that Aziz Ojolari struggled with in his rookie season, which is why he dropped because he's not a proficient run defender yet. This guy is coming out of the gates as a proficient run defender, which is something that is super valuable on day one for a, 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 a defense that's going to play a lot of cover one and a lot of blitzes. They need to be able to stop the run. Yeah. And I think the run defending is probably his best trait. And I have to say, you mentioned he used to play linebacker when he was over at Georgia. That's probably where this comes from, you know, or, you know, just kind of understanding where the running back is going to be, being able to anticipate where the running back is headed and then getting to that spot, setting the edge, filling the gaps, doing all that kind of stuff. Those are linebacker things, but he's doing it as an edge rusher. And the power that he had there on a pulling offensive lineman, right? Offensive lineman is pulling. He's got a full head of steam. And you can just see the way that Jermaine Johnson anticipated that. You see, he drops down, he can, and then he looks to find the offensive lineman pulling. He knows that a pulling offensive lineman is coming, gets set, powers through, sets the edge, and goes and makes a great tackle. Like, this is a linebacker play, but he lined up as an edge rusher here. That's a lot of great versatility that you're talking about, and it's also power. When we're talking about that upper body strength that I've mentioned multiple times already in this video, that's it right there. He almost put that lineman on his ass. Like, that lineman struggled on that rep because Jermaine Johnson was just ready for him and shoved him real good. Like that is strength. That is power. And then he's also got the pursuit to chase down and the speed to chase down that running back. This is a phenomenal rep. And I'll even throw this out there. I'm looking through, you know, some readings over Jermaine Johnson and Ben Fennel of uh, he's an NFL reporter that covers the draft is saying that um, he's got a great pass rush arsenal, but he's one of the most advanced edge setting defensive ends that Ben Fennell has ever studied and his tape blows him away in terms of his run defending. Yeah. And it's spot on. Right. And like you said before, he bent almost bench pressed a left guard that was going full force into the trenches right there. He's running, he's running forward and you see a guy like Jermaine Johnson, he's standing still, right? He's just getting ready for impact. And the, in the offensive line, we're talking a left guard who's probably got like 50 pounds on him, literally has his back bent backwards. Like it's not even close. This dude is powerful beyond means. Um, and you're seeing it here. I mean, this you put a tight end on the guy, you're going to be in big trouble. I, I can't tell if that's a tight end or not. It looks a little bit bigger to be a tight end, but let's take a look. I think it's a right tackle there. And he, I mean, he look, he just completely throws him off of him. He just throws this man off. I mean, look, engages here. He literally throws him off of that. That is incredibly difficult to do. You're talking about a 300 pound human being, and he just tossed him away. Get off of me. Let me get this tackle real quick. That is tremendous. You don't see this very often. Yeah, and it was all set up really with his base. Like if you see the way that he gets into the stance, I love the anticipation that he plays with when he knows it's a running play. He just gets into such a great stance. You see right there, it's a wide base. It's a strong base. He gets into a squat position, and then he uses really strong hands in his upper body to just gain leverage on the offensive lineman. He gets his hand on the offensive lineman's chest. Now that's always the number one thing as an offensive lineman. You can't let the defender get control of your chest because then you're going to lose the rep. The offensive lineman allows him to get control of his chest, but Jermaine Johnson doesn't just, you know, take advantage of that. He really takes advantage of that by throwing the right tackle to the ground. I mean, it's a very impressive rep. Shows the upper body strength, but it also, once again, shows the form, the technique to just, like, quickly fire into that run defense stance and make that play. Yeah, and it, it doesn't stop here, right? The running, the running plays that he stops are all over. I mean... Look, just watch this. He just blows up. It looks like a tight end, number 47. He comes across the line of scrimmage and completely takes him out of the play. And then he gets, and then he helps uh, gang tackle the running back. But I mean, man, 
if you're a guy coming across the line of scrimmage hoping to block Jermaine Johnson, you're in for a bad day. I mean, <laughs> number 47 did not look committed to that whatsoever. He sees him coming and he's like, no, no, I don't want any of the smoke. And he gets bench pressed too. This guy is just bench pressing people left and right. I mean, if he ends up coming to the combine, I think he is, he's going to show some pretty damn good strength numbers. I'll tell you that. I mean, I mean, this guy doesn't even stand a chance. If you have tight ends coming off coming off the edge and, and you're trying to block Jermaine Johnson, who has a, a clear a clear lane to your running back or quarterback, you are in big trouble. Yeah, he, he is a big dude. I mean, even look at this play. Look at how he he like sizes up against that offensive Stop line. He's hands. larger. He's larger than a lot of these offensive linemen that he's lining up against. Like in terms of his length, in terms of his power. Like he on that play, actually, if you pause it at a certain moment there. You can't really tell who's the offensive lineman and who's the defensive lineman. Like they are the same size on this clip. Like right here, I mean, he's a little leaner, but he's got that functional strength, that compactness to his body. He really holds his weight together. And he's also just got a tremendous amount of agility for a guy his size. And yes, the hands, as you mentioned, Alex, the way he uses his hands there. But this is also part of that, you know, the quick feet, right? Because if you see the way that he sets it up, he fires out of the stance here. And look at how he chops those feet. Did you see how many steps he took? He probably took like six steps there. Tremendous chops those speed. feet. Offensive lineman can't tell where he's going. And then he uses his hands. It's really, it was quickness into power, right? It was the cheap, it was the choppy feet that set it up. And then he uses hands to finish it off and get to the quarterback. It's a very impressive rep once again. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to give you a little bit of staggering run, run, uh, defending and pass rushing here. But this is, I mean, this offensive lineman has his hands stretched full. And he completely sidesteps this man. I mean, this again, he's ghosting people. He's teleporting around them because um, he's so fast and his hands and feet are so in sync that he's able to react. Uh, and, and I mean, this guy, I mean, this guy looks like he's doing ballet behind him. Um, and it's unbelievable what he's, what he's capable of accomplishing with the right coaching. We're talking about a player that could be an elite pass rusher at the next level. I mean, you, like you said before, he's a huge dude. He's what is he? Five, six foot five. I said he was look at him. Look at him coming off the edge, man. This dude was a linebacker at Georgia. He is huge. He's massive. Six foot it's, five, 265 pounds. Like, this I mean, guy's man, a unit. He's, he's a, freaking a freaking unit. unit and he moves man. so well for a guy that size. I mean, the movement is look insane. At the, look at the redirection here. Look at the redirection. Yep. I mean, for a guy that size, he's, he's going to pass rush, right? He's waiting to see if this is going to be a handoff. And he sees the quarterback, and then he sees the handoff. Incredibly smart football IQ. He, he plants that leg in the ground, changes direction. This right tackle has no idea where he's going. No idea where he's going, and he collects this uh, this tackle easily. I mean, that type of redirection, that type of football IQ, seeing what's happening, especially with the NFL nowadays, going towards RPO, is going towards play action, a lot of movement all the time going on, jet sweeps. Defenders who understand the different formations understand where that ball is going, understand they've done their film work are going to be successful because they're going to make plays uh, to stop those. And it's going to be obvious on film and tape that he's making an impact. This guy is making an impact. Let's see over here on the left side. I mean, he's ripping, he's ripping him completely out of the way. Like, I, like, we keep saying the hands. He's yeah, ripping this again, guy. Another pass hands rusher. and the power combo, right? Like just how powerful he is when he makes impact with that offensive lineman. He pushed that offensive lineman back like two yards on instant impact. And that's just the strength to fire out of your stance and then just have the ability to, like you mentioned, bench press an offensive lineman. Like that power is really valuable. He's got that. He's got that upper body strength. We said it, six foot five, 265 pounds. He's a unit, but he's also got that speed. And this is just a tremendous play. I mean, too. he scores a touchdown here. It's just probably the highlight of his career on this play. This is against Clemson, um, and, and he's just able to power through an offensive lineman, strip the football, and scoop and score. It's probably the highlight of his career. This was super impressive play right here, and this is the kind of stuff that you know that that screams a first round prospect to me, just to have the ability to make a play like this. Yeah, exactly. And then he went to the Senior Bowl and kicked the crap out of Trevor Penning, who is another first round offensive line talent. We're talking about we've seen in this video, and you're about to see. He's beaten up Ikema Kwonu, Trevor Penning, 
beat the shit out of Clemson. He's going to good schools and beating up their best players, right? You're talking about big football schools who go to big bowls. You know, like this is not a small school prospect doing against small schools. Like a lot of people hit on Malik Willis being at Liberty and he's just, he's not going against NFL talent. This dude is going up against NFL talent and dominating them week in, week out, 11 and a half sacks, 17 and a half tackles for a loss as a run defender. The guy is a stud, you know, he's super aggressive, but he's also super smart and he's able to change direction incredibly fast for a six foot five, 265 pound uh, defensive end here. And the fact of the matter is he can play outside linebacker too. And you're going to see why in a couple of seconds here, um, because he's also capable of dropping back into coverage, which a lot of times is what you're asked to do as an outside linebacker, especially with under James Betcher. I'm not sure Wink Martindale will do the same, but he's capable of doing it. I mean, like, we said the quick feet, those quick feet make it so hard for tackles to figure out what he's going to do. Bam, inside spin move, he's gone. Like he was the best player at the senior bowl. There was a hundreds, a hundred, whatever, how many players there. He was the best one out of all of them. And that should say something in my opinion. Has a lot to say. I mean, it says a whole lot. It honestly does. And, you know, you're mentioning all the great things that make him such a special prospect to show him going off in the first round potentially uh, come April, but it's the senior bowl, man. That's where players really rise in stock. He came Mm -hmm. to play at the senior bowl. This is uh, I I believe I saw a stat where um, 65% of players or 45% of players that play in the senior bowl, make it to the NFL. Like this is where the best of the best competition goes right after every year in college, this is where they go. Like you're seeing a play like that where he just flattened an offensive lineman and then a play like that, where he flattened another offensive lineman. He's just throwing out pancakes and he's a defensive end. It's incredible. And and he's got the ability to stand up in a two point stance as well. He's not just, you know, I know a lot of these plays showed him in the, in the three point stance, sometimes in the four point stance with his hands in the dirt, but he's also got the ability to be a stand up edge rusher in a three, four linebacker uh, outside system. So, I, I think that he really does have that versatility, and I don't think that the Giants would have to, you know, if they were to draft him, make him play down on the line of scrimmage. Like, he can stand up and be your two-point stance edge rusher, in my opinion. Yeah, no, he can be. He can do a lot of different things. And um, what I like to see throughout this film, guys, aside, specifically talking about the pass rush, is all the different moves that we've seen, right? He's used those jab steps. He's used that rip and pull. He's used the club. He's used the bull rush. We've seen every single move. Like when we were watching Aziz Ojolari's film last year, he was really good at that club and then the bend around the edge. And he used that almost every single time. When you're looking at this guy, he's able to read, react, and use a bevy of different moves to beat an offensive tackle um, in a pass rush situation, which is a tremendously advanced thing to say for a college pass rusher. So I think that based on all the moves that we've seen and displayed and, and you know that we've looked at, I personally think he's capable of being a top 10 pick. If we picked him at seven, I'd be happy about it. I'm not going to lie. I'd be happy about it. If we traded back and got him at 15, I'd be over the moon. You know what I mean? Like this is a player who I think can make an instant impact in the run game, but also is a tremendous player in the pass rush situations as well. Incredibly smart. He's a leader. And I'll read you a quote just to to smooth that over a little bit more. Um, Let's see here. So from CBS Sports, Danny Kennell, he says this about him. Even more than what he showcased in practices at the Senior Bowl, one-on-one drills against some of the top talent in the country, um, it's once you get around him. And this is something that Mike Norvell told me. Once he got on campus at Tallahassee, almost instantly saw, you know, the leadership and intangible start uh, coming to the forefront. But he's explosive off the ball. He can flat out get after the quarterback as he showed in Tallahassee this season. So he's also a leader. And that's something that Joe Shane has really focused on the last couple of uh, weeks, saying during his, his press conferences, there, oftentimes you miss on the person, not the player. This dude is a hell of a player, and he's also a hell of a person. So that what makes me think the Giants could really look at him and say, hey, this guy has all the tangible traits. He definitely has all the in- intangible traits. And now that we have some good coaches on that defensive line, anything's possible, man. You could really see um, this guy blossom into a stud player, and I would love to see that moving forward, um, Anthony. But, you know, let me let me hear your last remarks on Jermaine Johnson and where you think he might be able to go after watching this film. Last remarks, I think he's going in the top 15 for sure, maybe top 20 if he falls a little bit. I could definitely see him being a top 10 pick if a team falls in love with his traits, especially as a run defender. You know, his role in the NFL, in my opinion, is going to be primarily as an edge setting, run defending edge rusher. He's got that power. He's got that size that's just unheard of. That's six foot five, uh, 265 pounds to combine with the agility that he has. He has those traits that are just really special. And that's the thing is a lot of the times when people take a look at edge rushers, and they look at, you know, talents going in the first round, 
they always want to pass rushing edge rusher in the first round because what is the edge rusher's primary position or a primary job it is to get after the quarterback and that's what everyone thinks of so he might not be the best pass rushing edge rusher in this class but you can bet he is absolutely the best run defending edge rusher in the class and maybe even by a wide margin which might make him just as valuable if not more than some of those guys at the top because yes they might be phenomenal pass rushers but Jermaine Johnson's a phenomenal run defender and a good pass rusher. So he's got some really great value. His role in the NFL is going to be interesting to watch develop because absolutely from day one, I think he's going to be a solid edge setter, but eventually he's going to work together with those pass rushing moves that he already has and just refine them and add a little bit more quickness, hopefully a little more straight line speed. And then he can turn into a real dominant force, I believe. So I, I do think that this guy is a top 15 to 20 talent um, in any year's draft. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where he ends up falling. Uh, which team he ends up going to and what his career ends up looking like. Yeah, absolutely. Like last year's draft was kind of weak on the pass rush front. So, you know, it totally uh, could see him, you know, in another draft, maybe last year, he might be a top 15 pick guaranteed. Um, but like we said, you know, there are cons to his game. Um, you know, he definitely shows the, the speed, the agility and the run defending, but his pass rush could be a little bit more. I think that he's pretty good with most of his moves, but I also think that he could refine them. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't stand out as anything that was like elite by any means in terms of pass rush moves. Um, but I do think that they were all at least average to slightly above average. And I think that the well-rounded aspect of that gives you something to work off of the raw attributes, the raw capabilities, and already having like the basic fundamentals down for a lot of these pass rush moves will make a coach's job a lot easier, especially if he's coachable. And I think he is. So obviously a player we're going to be looking at um, during the, during the combine, see what he measures in that, see what guys are saying about him. Um, different reports that are coming out, but it seems like a lot of analysts are coming out and saying that they think he could be a top 15, even top 10 pick. So we'll see. Obviously there's a couple of weeks left before the draft and really a couple, like two months left before the draft. So anything could happen. His stock could skyrocket. Thibodeau's could, could plummet. Who knows? There's a lot left to see and a lot left to, to dive into, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take a look at FSU's Jermaine Johnson had a stellar year last season. Um, I definitely think he's rising up my draft board uh, for sure, but there's a lot of great players in this draft class. So we still have a lot of work to do in terms of looking at other players and what they're capable of providing. Um, because at the end of the day, those guys could end up being higher on the draft board simply because their film was better. But I'm excited to dive into more guys in the near future, Anthony. Next, we've got the combines. We'll get you guys any content uh, regarding that as we can. Make sure to drop a like and subscription below on the YouTube channel. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants video. Mm -hmm.